sex. It's a weird phenomenon, isn't it? And at this time of year, around early March, there's a lot of it going on, sometimes in the most unlikely of places, such as in this daffodil. Flowers, remember, are basically a plant's genitals. And if I was to poke my finger into the corona, this tube-shaped part of the flower here, my finger should get covered in flower jizz, basically, otherwise known as pollen. So it's clear that sexual strategies are extremely diverse, not just in the animal kingdom, but in the plant kingdom too. So let's go for a little wander and see what other forms of sex we can find. Come on. Ugh. So what is the point in sex exactly? Well, sex acts as a way of shaking up the genes. It means the offspring that are produced are gonna be different, genetically different from the mum and the dad, which is a good thing because it means things like parasites are constantly kept on their toes because every individual in the population is different. And this is something which we call the Red Queen hypothesis, named after the Red Queen in Alice Through the Looking Glass. Unlike our daffodil, sometimes plants don't have any insect friends to do all the dirty work for them. And this plant right here is an example of that. This is a hazel tree and dangling from it are these characteristic hazel catkins. Now these guys rely on wind pop pol no, <laughs> These guys rely on wind pollination. The catkins themselves are the male parts of the plants. They're what produce the pollen. And they need to transfer that pollen to the female part of the plant. Now, where's the female part? Well, if you look closely on one of these branches, towards the base of the males, you see this small anemone-like tiny flower. And that's the female part of the plant. So, what this catkin has got to do is disperse its pollen to the female part of a plant on another plant around here. So that means it's got to produce a lot of pollen because 99% of that pollen goes to waste. So that's why a lot of flowers, in fact most flowers, don't rely on wind pollination. It's just too wasteful and too risky. What a weird and interesting way to have sex. But apart from me, the sexiest animals at this time of year have got to be the birds. So the day before I filmed this, I heard one of my favourite signs of spring. Now, of course, spring isn't just a feast for the eyes, it's a feast for the ears too. And just above me, I can hear a sound which I'm sure I've never heard this early on in the year. It's the distinctive call of a skylark. Now, it's going to be pretty impossible to film this thing because they sing very, very high up. And that's part of the point, really. They want to project their sound as far as possible. It's like having an overhead loudspeaker. And they're there trying to defend territories, gain territories, and then hopefully get some females into those territories. And it's stopped now. <laughs> <laughs> now for some birds, it doesn't matter how sexy your voice is, it all boils down to how woody your trunk is. Tree trunk, of course, and the species I'm talking about is the greater spotted woodpecker. At this time of year, you'll have males throbbing their head against tree trunks, creating a deliciously sexy sound that'll attract the females in. And sometimes you can attract some woodpeckers in of your own. If you grab a, a stone and really bash your stone against your trunk, um, sometimes some woodpeckers are attracted in. I can't actually hear any woodpeckers at the moment, but I just thought I'd let you know. <laughs> Let's carry on walking. But the absolute showstoppers when it comes to sexual behaviour at this time of year are the amphibians. That is, the frogs, the newts and the toads. Now, you can't see where I am at the moment, but I'm by my local pond, which at this time of year is thriving with amphibian activity. And I'm hoping I'll be able to show you a frog. the other boot. Yeah, also now got in the other boot. How wet are your feet, Benito? Eh? Soaking as a, a water bowl in a washing machine. <laughs> well, whilst I was looking for my frog, I found this guy. This is a smooth newt. More specifically, it's a male smooth newt, and you can tell that 
by that lovely speckled body and also it's got a bit of a crest which I'm not sure you can see but once it's in the water it's really really prominent and they are also sexually active at this time of year although they've got a very different mating strategy um, to our frogs. These males will perform a bit of a dance. They're a lot more sophisticated than the frog in a way. They'll perform a bit of a dance and waft their tail at the female. And whichever male wafts their tail, um, the sexiest, um, gets to um, fertilize the female's eggs. This guy is ready to tango. Get off me, you moron. Well, it looks like this has been quite an unsuccessful trip, but there is another pond that I know of where I'm almost certain we'll get some good frog or even toad action. So it's not all over yet, maybe.